welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. What explains the bipartisan commitment to unending wars and foreign military interventions? Recent polls show the majority of veterans who fought in this century's foreign wars say it wasn't worth it. In 2016, Trump gained traction for doubting foreign adventures. Today, Tulsi Gabbard is doing the same. Why are the elites so out of touch? Cross-talking unending wars, I'm joined by my guest, Daniel Shaw in New York. He is a professor of Latin American and Caribbean studies at City University of New York. In Bethesda, we have Peter Kuznick. He is a professor of history and director of the Nuclear Studies Institute at American University, as well as co-author with Oliver Stone of The Untold History of the United States. And in Washington, we cross to Lee Camp. He is the host and head writer of the comedy news show, Redacted Tonight on RT America. All right, gentlemen. Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Let's go to Bethesda. Peter, I think that all of us would agree, and our audience, that it, it's unlikely that we would ever compare Tulsi Gabbard and Donald Trump, okay? They're, they're very, very different, but they do have one commonality, and it's an attitude towards foreign adventures. Now, Donald Trump has not been able to do much about his uh, rhetoric of the campaign while he's been in office, but Tulsi Gabbard keeps going. Both of them are sh um, slammed every time they go outside the, 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 the borders uh, or the, um, the, the perimeters of the bipartisan commitment to these wars. Why is it, why do they get slammed down so hard, so fast, even with people within their own party? Go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> well, as you indicate, there's a broad bipartisan consensus when it comes to American foreign policy. And it's... Uh, dominated by a neocon, neoconservative worldview, is based on this idea of American exceptionalism, that the United States has the right, the duty, the obligation to intervene around the world, that the United States is God's gift to humanity, that unlike everybody else, we're altruistic and benevolent, we want to spread freedom and democracy, but the net result of this is that we live in a world in which the richest eight people have more wealth than the poorest 3.8 billion people. That U.S. policy has been a consistently interventionist one, that uh, the Cold War never really ended. Mm -hmm. the policy did not change at the end of the Cold War. And there's been a war, a war between the first world and the third world ever since. But it's very, very dangerous. Tulsi understands that. I don't agree that Donald Trump and Tulsi are in any way comparable. Uh, Tulsi's views on foreign policy are so much better informed than Donald Trump's. Well, that's for sure. Donald, that's for Donald sure. Donald Trump's record is actually very hawkish, very militaristic. So even though he has a rhetoric about not wanting to intervene, it's very, very different than the kind of progressive, intelligent worldview. Sure in which one is opposed to this. Okay, well, well, I agree with you completely. My point is, for example, uh, removing troops from Syria and, you know, even his own uh, government, his own cabinet, uh, you know, came piling. And I, I take your point well taken here. Daniel, let me go to, to you. In my introduction also, I mentioned that recent polling because of Memorial Day, um, the veterans of these wars in this century, these interventionist wars, they say the majority... A large majority actually say, it, quote unquote, it wasn't worth it. So that should be kind of some wake up call, wouldn't you think? Go ahead, Daniel. One would certainly hope, but the foreign policy establishment, the, the Pentagon, uh, has never listened to the veterans or listened to anybody except for their own narrow interests. Uh, of course, the Vietnam era veterans still suffering to this day from PTSD and thousands upon thousands, um, tens of thousands of our loved ones, sisters and brothers sent to Iraq and Afghanistan in these wars of foreign pillage. Uh, no question that these veterans are against the war and Tulsi Gabbard very articulately uh, captures that sentiment. And she's really a fresh of breath air in these mm -hmm. stale uh, Democratic Party debates when no one besides Bernie is willing to take on the foreign policy establishment. And here you have a very unique individual with 16 years of quote unquote service, one might say disservice, if one agrees with Martin Luther King that the U.S. government and the U.S. military are the greatest purveyors of violence in the world. But she speaks a certain language and can go on Fox News yeah. and can relate to really uh, millions of American families. And they're afraid of, they're very definitively afraid of her. 
Yeah, they, they really are, and it is really. Shalom. Call hello, Allah, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh which means all praises to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people ignorantly call God, by Hashem, which is in the name of Yahweh, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Plus, I'm going to give a shout out to the Akron that's pushing and spreading this word throughout the four corners of the earth, who's also uplifting the name Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, also. To the Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird out there whose bloodline traces it back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. Though you may look like the heathen nations, as I'm about to get, the heathen nations. Oops. The heathen nations are the nations on this chart. If it will pop up, you know, Slakia. Like the heathen nations are the nations on this chart. As seen on this chart, it's 2 1 to 18, okay? Also, if your lineage your sea line goes back to one of these tribes through the man and if your spirit bear witness with this word and this truth and you can receive it to the Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird out there, this does apply to you, man, woman, and child. You are Israelites, though you may look like the heathen. To the few aqua, few sisters that do listen and learn Shalom. To the elect of the nation of Israel, wherever you, wherever you may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, for this word is going out to you, shall want you as well. To you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, as you see on this chart right here, you combine, consist, and make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen people of the Most High Yahweh and His only begotten Son, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah. And um, another topic, but uh, you saw the video, basically, they um, they are going into uh, the unending wars when it comes to America. Okay, which America in the scriptures is, is under the cold names of Babylon the Great, Egypt, spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritual Assyria. Okay, many cold names, but mainly Babylon the Great, mystery Babylon the Great. And um, the point, the title of this is, I'm probably going to title this is uh, War. Only way war will cease if once war will cease if once Esau Edom, which the self-proclaimed white race, they're the Edomites. Their nation, their nationality, they uh, uh descend from the from the Edomites. Every every uh nation on this planet has a biblical nationality, okay? And their nationality is Esau Edom, okay? And um, war won't end. Until Esau is out of power. Okay. I'm going to start with Psalms 58. And one. It says. Speak. Do ye. Actually to the chief musician. Altasith. Alt Mictam of David. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yeah, in your heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Right? And it goes into the wicked. Okay? The wicked, which is the nation of Edom. Okay? Esau. Okay? They, have, they weigh the violence in the earth. Okay? This is Revelation 6. And four, it says, and there went out another horse that was red in power and to prove that red horse is Esau to anybody that's, you know, first coming across this. This is uh, Genesis 25. And I'll start at 21. It says, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So it's two separate nations in her womb. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. 
Because if you saw in Revelation 6 and 4, as I was, I was reading, it talks about that red horse. Who is it that red horse talking about? And the first came out red all over, like in hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, right? So that's enough, okay? Esau is that red horse, because if you go on the horse, it goes into power, okay? So let me get it again. This is Revelation 6 and 4. It says, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And they that sh and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, because that was Esau's blessing, that he will uh have the fatness of the earth, and he shall live by the sword, and thou shalt live by the sword, and that's what he's doing. The sword that he's using is mainly the military. Okay? That's why you have all these wars. Because he was set up to be the wicked. Okay, he was set up to take peace from the earth. That's why there ain't no peace on earth. That's why you have what you see uh going on with Korea, for instance. You have South, you have the whole Korea. You have South Korea, you have North Korea. They hate each other. Okay? Why? Because America came in and divided them. Okay, you see within all throughout the world, everybody's against each other. Okay? Cause it's showing you that red horse is in power. Okay? Esau eat him. Okay? And he was put on here to take peace from the earth. That's why when they talk about peace, okay? Like it says in Psalms, the 55th chapter, the 20 and 21st verse, they talk about peace. They break the covenant. Like, they break their so-called peace agreements. And what happens? War breaks out. Just like we're entering in now. Just like we're in now. World War Three, Okay? Which is prophesied to happen according to the scriptures. Okay? Because Esau is in power. That's just one way to show you that he's in power. That shows you also that uh the so-called Jew over there in Israel, they're not the real people. Okay? They ain't they ain't the real people. Because hold on. This is um to show that uh we going to war. This is Revelations. 11. Actually, let me get Jeremiah 50 and 20. Because the Lord is, is going to give Esau what he wants. Because Esau, he's he's bloodthirsty. You saw on the screen, on the screen of that video I showed you, it said almost 800, 1,000 people. Uh, were murdered due to the endless wars from America, basically, okay. But it, it really, that's 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 nothing. That's an underestimate. That's it's really a lot more people that died, okay, through the war, the bloodshed of, of America, okay. This is Jeremiah fifty and twenty twenty two. It says, "A sound of battle was in the land of great destruction," and that's the point, right? World War Three is on the horizon. Because the Lord is going to give Esau what he wants. Because Esau, starting with these elites, they think that this third world's war is going to benefit them. And they're going to be in for a, a, a bad mistake. Okay, It's going to be a worse nightmare. Okay, The second war was passed, which the second war was what? World War III. Okay? And the third, behold, the third world coming quickly. A second world, Salaki, is, is World War II. And the third world is World War III. Okay? That's that sound of great destruction. Sound of battle, I mean. Okay? And the Lord is going to gather these heathens, as I'm about to get. This is Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is down in that Mid -East, that Middle East region where you see all the commotion going on that. Right? He's going to gather all these heathens, right? Esau and all the rest of the heathens and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and the speckled bird who could receive this, okay? This is why the Lord is going to send them down there. It's for a, a controversy of Zion, okay? And whom they have scattered amongst the nations and part of my land, right? And they have cast lots for my... No, that's not it. Let me skip down to the um, third, the ninth verse. It says, proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles. This is talking about the actual Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares and the swords and your pawns and the spears. Let the weak sound strong. 
Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. They that cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wicked and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right? Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And whose wickedness is great? You people. But it's really a, 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 a star with Esau, because Esau is the wicked. And he's the one that's pushed wickedness throughout uh, 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 the four corners of the earth. Okay? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley decision. Right? Let me get Isaiah 34. And you're going to see what I'm getting at. Right? Because in order for peace to come, war has to come. This last great war has to come. Isaiah 34 and 1. Come near ye nations, hear to hearken. Come, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear all that is therein. Because... We're a prophet unto the world. We're telling you, heathens, your judgment, that you're going into captivity. And we're telling two-thirds of our people, they don't get right. Well, you how about Shem Yahweh Shah, okay? They're going to get destroyed as well, okay? For the indignation, there's a second verse. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. The slain also shall be cast out, and the stench shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, which that's metaphoric for what? The mushroom cloud coming from the missiles that's going to be shot during this third world war. Because this third world's war is going to be what? A nuclear war. Okay? And it's set up like that on purpose. Okay? It says... And all the host shall fall down as a leaf fall off from the vine, as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, behold, shall come down upon Idumia, which is you Edomites, you so-called white people, upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, is made fat with fatness, and with the lamb, the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidney, the kidneys of ram, for the Lord have made a sacrifice in Basra, which is the capital city of Edom. Okay? And you could com compare modern Basra to America. Okay, this is where most of the Edomites' uh, gender gets pushed is through America, and, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and the dust made fat with fatness. For it's the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, which is Israel. And the streams thereof shall be turned to pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone. The land thereof shall become a burning pitch from the missiles. Okay. The lake of fire, that's what the lake of fire is, the missiles. Once the missiles hit, if you look up in the sky when the missiles hit, it's going to look like a, a, a pool or a pond of fire, a lake of fire, like it says. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Okay? So basically, it's going to uh, America being the what? A desolate wilderness. I mean, America, what you see right now, when this world, Third World War hit, and the missiles hit and destroy America, America is not going to look like it used to, what you see now. It's going to be a big desert, okay? Just like you see in the movie Planet of the Apes, the old school one. You saw it was just a desert, and you seen the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, it was in the sand. Meaning America was destroyed, okay? That's really going to happen. And, um, let me see if it's Isaiah 2. This is uh, Isaiah 2 and 1. Because this was going to come after that. Because when the nuclear missiles hit, that's the end of Esau's world. As it says, as I always quote, Second Ezra, the 6th chapter, the 7th verse, for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob, which is you tribes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, is the beginning of it that followed. That's the end of Esau's, that's the end of Esau's rulership right there. And this is what's going to take place. It says... Uh, the word, this is Isaiah 2 and 1, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, right? And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow onto it. And that's talking about Yasharala, Israel. 
Okay? We're going to be set up. This is after the destruction of America. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, to the house of the Most High of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his path, for our Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And this shows that the so-called Jew in Israel right now, they're not the real people. Because that's not happening. The law, okay, is not uh, 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 going forth. Wickedness is going forth, right? And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords and plowshares and the spears and prone hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So if they are the people, why is it, uh, why are we on the brink of war? Why are we in World War Three? Okay? Why are you seeing the things leading up to World War Three? Because they're not the people. They, they're the Edomites. Okay? But what I just showed you is, that's, that's what's going to take place. And it also says that these weapons that these heathens got, starting with the nation of Edom, that's going to be burnt up. Okay? That's when peace is going to be set on earth. Okay? When uh, Esau is taken out of power. Because as long as this man's ruling, you're going to keep having mass death, confusion. Okay? That's all you're going to have for Esau. You're not going to have anything else. Okay? This I'll start at Ezekiel 39 and 7. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. Who? The heathen. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come. It is done, said the Lord Yahweh. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows the, and the arrows and the hand staffs and the spears. And they shall burn them with fire seven years. So these tanks, these guns that Esau has, uh, your, just your average weapon that's being used by these heathens is all going to be destroyed after World War III. After everything takes place. Jacob's trouble. So that they shall not take no wood out of the field, neither cut down. Any of the four out of any out of the force, but they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them. Who, who's gonna be, who's gonna do the spoiling? Israel, our people, and who's gonna be spoiled? The heathen nations, mainly you Edomites, right? And rob those that robbed them, said the Lord Yahweh. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley, and Gog is the so-called is Russia, right? And the valley of passages on the east of the sea, and they shall stop the noses of the passages, and they shall they bury Gog and all the multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Hamagog. And what's that going to? That's going to be all the dead bodies from the world war. Like it said, that their carcasses shall uh, stink, shall come up from their carcasses, as it said in Isaiah 34th chapter. Those bodies are going to be buried, but who's going to be burying those bodies? It's going to be our, our, our future slaves, you Edomites, and all the rest of you heathens, okay? Uh, 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 all the rest of you heathens that's, um, that's, that survived the so-called nuclear holocaust, that survived Jacob's trouble. Because all the people that die, uh, from that, they're going to come back through the remnant of the heathen that survived, okay? Point being is, your weapons will be burnt, okay? And you will be slaves. It tells you that, like it said, you going to, instead of having weapons, you're going to receive... A, a plow, a hand stuff, and all that. That's all what? Farm, farming equipment. Things you build with because you're going to be slaves in the kingdom. You're going to be spoiled. Okay? And this is when the world, as I'm about to get. Right? This is when this is going to take place. It's Isaiah 14, 7. The whole earth is at rest. Why? Because Israel is going to be in power. And it's quiet. They break forth into singing. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee. And the setters of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feathers come up against us. Okay? That's, but the point was made. The whole earth is going to uh, be at peace 
when Israel, when Esau is taken down and Israel is set up, and then eventually the Edomites will be done away with. Okay? That's when war is going to be, uh, peace is going to be established on earth. But as of right now, as this man's in power, which he's coming out of power, we're going to see more bloodshed. Okay? Until, he, until the Lord takes him out. So, that was a lesson. Call Hala Allah Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Shalom. Shalom to the uh, uh, elect. Shalom.